Let's talk about. Let's talk about. Ooh, this makeup is something. Let's talk about dudes with microphones. Dudes with mics. Okay, right. It's a thing. It's like Western culture is aspirational. We have self help, self development, level up, level up, level up, level up. <laughs> like we we have we've agreed we're complicit with the hierarchy ironically when you look back at history where else has there been a hierarchy a monarchy if you will a kingdom hmm hmm even christianity is co-opt the language have kingdom mentality have king mentality i'm i'm you know drag culture i'm a queen mentality Mentality, mentality, mentality. Guys with microphones quoting other guys in history to give themselves prowess uh, in the industry right now. So there's there's sort of an intersection of entertainment, education, motivation, industry. I think that the father of that, we can point to Tony Robbins. Obviously, he is not the inventor of po positive psychology. However, he has done a fantastic job leveraging he who has the most toys wins in the 80s that sort of um grappling for material possessions and status uh has led us to where we are in the conversation about your value as a human being your value your worth you're so worth and then the memes the memes the memes the world of memes and so what we've done to our educational system is we have distilled it down to a three, four second reel to, you know, and, and I am not uh, berating the format. I think that it's, you know, micro learning is great. However, it's also fragmented, right? Let me give you an example of this. So I'm studying a book on from surviving to thriving about CPTSD. And then I also have a Oracle card deck, uh, which are, you know, little blips of information. When you pull a card, that card has a certain inference or meaning to it. And then you go, okay, well, how do I apply that to my life? They're like modern day thematic apperception tests. If you look into early behavioral psych or psychoanalysis thematic apperception test look into it so that's i think and then they play upon the placebo effect so i think that's what sort of oral cards tarot cards divination um can be compared to in modern psychology um and so so i'm reading that card and then about cptsd and the card talked about internally and this is a big buzz the divine masculine divine feminine it makes me want to puke in my mouth hold on <laughs> okay good got it fine i'm fine thank you for asking um the divine masculine is just you know whatever manly man is a leader and a leader is somebody who can be assertive and considerate simultaneously however when out of balance they'll be uh, aggressive and critical and um, domineering right so my divine masculine card was like you if you're out of balance internally in that world and your own internal leadership you're going to be highly critical of yourself highly critical and i was like i am i'm highly critical of myself you know, I've dated some real fucking losers and I blame myself for letting them into my life. But that's how I maintain a seat of control. So then I compared, oh, someone, I'm sorry, this loud background noise, hopefully you can't hear it. Anyway, it's annoying, it's distracting to me. Probably not you until I mentioned it. So now it is. Okay, so I'm reading this book about thriving from surviving to thriving in CPTSD. And it said, you know, one of the markers of healing your uh, hurt, pain, trauma, uh, the dysregulation of your nervous system, if you will. Oh God, these are all buzz buzzwords at this point, but hopefully, spread it in the joints, you understand what I'm saying, is a, a very loud inner critic, like a deep self-critic that you're going to be critical. So 
So from the lens of clinical psychology, uh, using the metrics of CPSD and the measures within the continuum of deeply traumatized and dysfunction to heal the whole and functional, there is this intersection of a critic and inner, uh, you're a piece of shit, you're never gonna accomplish anything, you're not lovable. Well, comparatively speaking, that the language is the same through a different lens of masculine, feminine, divine masculine. They're saying the same thing using different language, right? And so the, uh, the articulation of that, the assertion of that is how one would be able to uh, choose, you know, how to think about themselves. And so in our world of, and that's more of a global sort of view of like, hey, you can have the same conversation from two different lenses. But we've, what we've done in society is we celebrate the outliers, the extremes of the bell curve. And so we have these fractional bits of information thrown at us all day through adver ad advertisement, um, advertisement, if you would say it that way, uh, out, 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 flash, flash, flash. And, and those little things are actually meant um, as pattern, they imprint in your subconscious, like these, the sort of... Uh, innuendos, if you will, um, the inferences that we make and the meaning we make of them, the, the faster the information, the less time we have to actually fully rationalize and process it. So it tends to play into our instinctual uh, behaviors, our instinctual interpretation. And that's, that is where we've adrift with, you know, men and microphones. Now, are there female podcasts? Sure. Are there them podcasts? Of course. We have a, a whole blown up industry of an intersection of education and entertainment. In fact, YouTube tried to make YouTube University. Jordan Peterson, one of the current, you know, neo deities in our society is making, uh, trying to, to put together education. And so what we see is people who are able to organize a mass of information can also sway the mob campaigns if you will there's all sorts of campaigns podcasts are campaigns and they are campaigns that a lot of us just uh we don't verify the information that's being spoke about or if you're listening to um, Huberman, the, the, oh, bloody hell. Some information campaigns. One minute lettuce is bad for you. The next minute it's good for you. One minute sunlight's bad for you. The next minute it's absolutely necessary. You need it. One minute, like ice baths are fantastic for you. The next minute they're terrible for your nervous system. Like all of this, like competing information. So at this point, what we've done is we have completely eroded trust. And that is my whole uh, aim here is the restoration of trust, integrity. What, what can you truly stand on? And many of us try to, try to you know, resource this thing called the Bible or religion as a, um, stop looking at my ass. I know it's a great view. I have shorts on. This is a fit. I'm trying it on. Not every, not every fit freaking works. I heard you out there. I heard you say it. I, I heard you think it, you know, you know, I, I, I know you've got your freaking Pornhub tab open as well, <laughs> or whatever. So you can get your hit of dopamine. I digress, but I just know people's attention spans are like, blah, blah, blah. She's saying stuff. It doesn't apply to me. How am I going to get rich? How am I going to get laid? Maybe I need to do a line of Coke while listening to this bitch. I don't even fucking know why I'm here in the first place. It's you're here in the first place because without trust, it is hard to function. So we make these neo deities, these uh, quasi mentors, these digital educators and invest um, our decision making based on the information that we are receiving. And I would say that that information should be, um, it's verified that information should be vetted through the lens of validity, 
you know, okay, they're saying stuff to me. Is it actually valid and edifying for my well-being and existence? Or is this just a distraction? Am I just being distracted? Because ultimately, the core competency of life is what you put your attention on is entirely up to you. You know, you don't, ADHD is not an excuse. If you are given a diagnosis of something, that diagnosis is like a disease. You have a disease and hopefully there's tr the treatment of that disease is to put it into remission. But what we've done is instead of focusing on remission, we've given people permission for accommodation. We're accommodating and, and people only want accommodation because they're conflating that with like access to greater resources. And if they really calm the system enough, if they stay in that sort of uh, quasi victim mentality and they titrate in and out of that, um, then sometimes there's a reward there. And in fact, that's a version of a con, that's self-deception, oftentimes self-abandonment. And there's a ceiling to it, you know, there's a ceiling to it. My argument is, um, the more you're able to focus, the more you're able to take responsibility, the more you're able to, and there's a buzzword consistency, put things into action uh, in a repetitive, intentional format, the sooner you'll see these results that were once imagined, you know, the dream that's tugging on you. And as long as there's breath in your lungs and humans on this earth, you can start to be the artist, the maker of your experiences, right? You can, you can invite collaboration into your space. And, and the thing that I think really helps collaboration go from gestation into form into reality um, is the degree of which you can be truthful, the degree of which you can be authentic, the degree of which you uh, can keep your own promises to yourself. And so the conversation here is like, where are you getting your information from? Is it men with microphones that are just riffing and they are, um, they're just making you feel better about your misery. Like misery loves company. That's why it's lonely at the top. There's plenty of people um, within the first level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, of just you know basic needs that there's, there's a swath of individuals who are there um, congregating at, at bars and churches. But if you're really going to run your life, if you're really going to be a leader in your life, you, again, get to architect that. And so from whence are you gaining your information? From men with microphones with podcasts? Or are you going to uh, historical writing? What, is, what perspective are you taking? Are you able to take a global perspective? Uh, uh, be able to look at the macrocosm as well as the microcosm to be scrut scrutiny and granular. Um, you have to be able to be flexible in your, in your viewpoints, you know, uh, to be able to look at the big picture while also enacting um, the details, like taking care of the details. So my specialty is helping people navigate their lives sequentially um, while holding the big vision. And then also if you're in a position where you've summited and you're in what you call a leadership role, you know, how you basically find meaning within that role and uh, and the value on which you place on that role um, to the degree that it's full of integrity for you, or are you willing to con your way there? Most of my work is, it's highly philosophical uh, because one of the most effective tools of therapy, of coaching is verbal ventilation. You need to be able 
to talk out your thoughts. You need to be able to have a sounding board. You can't just scream into the void. And so when you're consuming all this, these podcast information, um, it actually, you are the void of which they're screaming into and how you assimilate that information uh, means nothing unless it, it shapes your behaviors and it shapes how you articulate yourself. So, you know, the dissemination of information is what is creating the scaffolding of our society and how people are behaving and, and sort of our values and how they're, they're showing up in the world. And why that matters to you is your household is an ecosystem. Even if you're single, your internal thoughts, your critic, your wise mind, your ego are all uh, going to make up your daily reality and you have to live in it. You've got to live in that fucking existential stew. So what you, how you sort of metabolize it, how you make sense of it, um, the degree of which you're acting from instinct versus rationality all makes a difference uh, in, in your ability to connect with people, which ultimately is the wealth of this lifetime. You know, um, meaningful friendships. Uh, you know, everybody says, I married my best friend. And that means that is a departure from uh, the romantic grand gestures into the mediocrity, not the mediocrity, the monotony of the day to day and finding the glory uh, in the, and the nuance in the mundane. If you can do that, if you can find the simplest things are the most profound, if you can have the, um, you have the capability of distillation of taking these big abstract thoughts and putting them into a place of application, you don't need me. You're doing great. Keep rocking this life until, until your wheels fall off, until your lungs give out. But if you're struggling, if you're like, I'm fucking confused, I don't know how to pull this off, or, you know, I've just been living in these structures that are completely corrupt and that I don't agree with, but they're basically what I've learned to survive on and it just doesn't feel good anymore, we should have a conversation. I'm available for that. So thank you for listening. I hope this has been edifying for you. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, you probably had to pull out your thesaurus or dictionary because I, I, I really like to articulate myself through these $10 words and not as a means of, um, you know, bolstering my intelligence. It's just there's something so gratifying in being able to utilize the English language um, in an artful way, in a meaningful way. So I hope that that something resonates with you as well. If not, fuck off. Go watch another channel. You know, you got you got other dumb shit to do today. But I'm here for the intelligent people who want to have intelligent conversations and be the game changers in this world. John Hams, game changers, the girls, the gays, and the corporate freaking titans. I'm here for you. And whoever the fuck else has the $3,000 to pay me a month. I love you. This has been good. Don't quote me on that price. It's going to get bigger over time because, you know, bring the juice. Oh, I did the duck face. I don't want to close that way. That's gross. That's gross. Ew. 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 Why? Why even bother? <sighs> oh my God. I have to like go buy some like Uggs and Lululemons and like sign up for hot yoga. And then like after that, I'm going to do a coffee enema and I'm going to post about it. And then I'm going to do it. And then I'll be significant. I see you, influencers. I got your number. I got your number. I'm here to conversate with you as well. Feels good. I feel complete in that. Okay, bye.